All right, so this is going to be number four on Suggested Problems acting, Activity 13.3. Uh, we're actually going to be solving uh, this rational inequality, which is x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x divided by x plus 1. And whatever values of x we get, it's going to have to be greater than or equal to 0. So what we need to do is we need to find where my x-intercepts are, as well as any values that we have to exclude, such as a whole or vertical asymptote. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fully factor everything. That's always generally the first step you want to do. First thing I see is I see there is a greatest common factor on top of x. So when I factor that out, I get x times x squared minus 2x minus 3 all over x plus 1. Well, x squared minus 2x minus 3 factors, now this still has to be greater than or equal to 1, but that factors to, we still have our x, x minus 3, x plus 1, all over x plus 1. Now here, I'm not asking you to graph it or anything along, along those lines. So yes, I have a, a hole that occurs when x equals negative 1, because they cancel out here and here. And then you guys are used to doing x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 1. Then plug it into your reduced formula and find the y value of where your actual hole is. We don't really need to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to take each unique factor, top and bottoms, set them equal to 0, and find some critical values. So I'm going to have x equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. Well, here, x is going to equal 3, and over here, x equals negative 1. But really, x cannot equal, one too many lines there, x cannot equal, x cannot equal. You have to remember that. So now, we're going to take each of these critical values. We're going to put them on our number line for our inequality test. So I've got negative 1, I have 0, and I have 3. Now, what I do to remind myself that I can't have negative 1 is I actually put a hole right there. So I know I can't touch it. Now I can touch over here at 0 and I can touch over here at 3. I'm not breaking any rules. So now I want to pick a number to the left of negative 1. I'm going to get, I'm going to pick negative 2. I want to pick negative 0.5 between negative 1 and 0. I am going to pick 2. And I'm going to pick 5 to the right of 3. And I pick 2 because that's between 0 and 3. Now, I want to plug these in because this is greater than or equal to 0. I'm only looking for positive numbers or negative numbers. The actual number doesn't make a difference. All positive numbers are greater than 0. All negative numbers are less than 0. And, of course, at 0 and 3, that's when it's going to equal 0. And that's why I can touch them because of the greater than or equal to. Well, over here... When I plug negative 2 in, I get a positive number. When I put negative 0.5 in, I also get a positive number. At negative 2, I get a negative number. And then at 5, I get a positive number. Well, this really tells me that I can have all of this. I cannot touch that. And I can have this. I have to skip. So I can put a square bracket because I'm included. Then I have to skip. And then I can have all of this. So when I write this answer in interval notation, I'm going to have the non-inclusive bracket, negative infinity, because you can never touch an infinity, to negative 1. We're not going to include it. Union, negative 1, all the way up to 0, and I can include 0. Union, and now I'm going to include 3, and I'm going to infinity to the non-inclusive bracket, because you can't touch infinity. And that is your answer. Nice and pretty. So really from there, solving these, really not too bad. You do have to keep in mind your excluded values. Um, I will every now and then throw a monkey wrench in, like on our quizzes and that are multiple choice. I will actually include a bracket, use the inclusive, inclusive bracket um, on an excluded term and see if you're just paying attention.